So good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That echo. Hopefully we can get that one. That we can get that one. That. So uh, I, I'm David so, Stevens. Uh, I'm David Stevens. I'm David Stevens, uh, Chair of the Department of Medicine, and I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, great to see a full house uh, for Grand Rounds. Uh, we want to thank you for an incredible year in the department. Uh, we want to celebrate our dedicated faculty and staff winners, and also we want to recognize a new group of uh, trainees, residents to the J. Willis Hurst Internal Medicine Residency Program. So let's see. So we want to uh, welcome all of the Department of Medicine uh, internal trainees. Would they stand up, please? Will all the new trainees <laughs> the department please stand? So thank you very much, and, and welcome to the Department of Medicine. We're extremely excited about you being here. Uh, it's a great department, great faculty, great staff, and uh, again, we want to welcome you. So, uh, so thank you very much. Whoops. So I just want to give you a bit of an overview of the Department of Medicine. 20 locations, uh, 141,000 square feet, 660 faculty, uh, full-time faculty, and 340 WOC faculty. Uh, these are faculty that have joint appointments with us or adjunct appointments. 81 PhDs in the department. Uh, we're as large as uh, two or three basic science departments from a PhD perspective. 286 clinical FTEs. Uh, 96 clinical FTEs based at Grady. Uh, in looking at our encounters at all of our hospitals, we have uh, about one point, over 1.3 million encounters, both outpatient and inpatient encounters. 391 staff, 182 residents, 146 fellows, 49 postdoctoral fellows, 154 individuals in, on our faculty who are principal investigators generating 103 million last year in uh, research awards. We also have a large uh, uh, clinical and translational science award that is based and housed by investigators in the department. And our operating budget is uh, for TEC is 217 million. Overall, we have about a $350 million overall budget. So it's a large uh, department. We are a diverse and inclusive department. We're continuing to strive to develop our uh, both gender and ethnicity, uh, diversity and inclusion. We've started a number of initiatives in the department around this area and uh, look forward to continuing developments in this space uh, over the next uh, 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 year and, and two years. And I, I want to thank uh, Aaron Lee and others in the department for helping us to uh, move this forward. I do want to uh, pause for a moment and to recognize uh, the loss of two key faculty members from the Department of Medicine last year. One was Elena Stone. Elena was in the Department of General Medicine and Geriatrics and was really a rising star, a great teacher, uh, energetic, Unfortunately, her life uh, was sh cut short because of illness. Uh, also, we lost Ken Walker. Ken was uh, a, uh, a force in the Department of Medicine for many years. He headed the training program for a number of years. 
Uh, there will be a memorial service for uh, Ken later this summer in August to continue to recognize his contributions, not only to the Department of Medicine, but for the school. But I want to take just a moment of silence for these two. Okay, uh, I also want to recognize emeritus faculty members who have uh, retired. Uh, Doit Kahn uh, led the Division of Rheumatology over a couple of, in a couple of uh, iterations. Uh, we want to thank Doit. Eric Honig uh, in, was a fixture in the pulmonary division at Grady for many, many years, uh, uh, and uh, Jim Hughes and Phyllis Kozarski outstanding leaders in infectious diseases, uh, both at our institution and at other institutions, and Russ Price, who uh, 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 is an emeritus faculty member. He moved to take a leadership role at East Carolina University last year. So I want to thank these faculty members for their longstanding service to the department. It is important that we not only recognize our faculty, but also our staff nominees for awards, and we'll do that uh, in a few minutes. I just want to recognize uh, this list and, and to, uh, uh, again, thank them for their service to the department and to the institution. Likewise, we have a lot of nominees. We had a luncheon last week to recognize these nominees for faculty awards. Uh, this, again, are individuals who have made significant contributions to the Department of Medicine, and I want to thank, uh, thank them and, and appreciate uh, th their service uh, again, and we'll recognize the winners uh, from this group this, this morning. And this is the second list of individuals uh, nominated uh, by divisions uh, for faculty awards. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Aaron Lee. Aaron is the Human Resources uh, Administrator for the Department of Medicine. We really uh, appreciate the contributions that Aaron has made and is making to the department. Uh, and he's going to talk about the Department of Medicine and present the Department of Medicine uh, staff awards. Aaron. Thank you, Dr. Stevens. I am uh, thrilled to be here to be able to present our 2018 Department of Medicine staff awards. Uh, the winners of these awards are being recognized in the areas of innovation, leadership, service, and their ability to go above and beyond for our department. So, of course, when I call your name, if you are one of the, our, our award winners, please come to the front of the auditorium to receive your award and, and take a photo uh, here with Dr. Stevens. So our first award is the Excellence in Innovation Award. Uh, this award recognizes a staff member who has displayed exceptional work and or has produced significant innovations for the Department of Medicine. Um, and this winner's nominator said, in a very short time, our recipient has implemented innovative changes to how the Department of Medicine pos positions itself to our faculty, residents, potential trainees, and the external audience. The Emory Department of Medicine is one of the few departments of medicine in the United States that has, has its own social media presence, and our recipient is always looking for ways to fine-tune our message and our position. She has worked with Dr. Karen Law to refresh and revitalize our communications with prospective and current residents, which included the, the development of promotional materials and a communication strategy that allowed prospective residents to feel welcome and also informed of the current process, key contacts, and next steps. So please join me in congratulating our 2018 Innovation Award recipient, Lauren Powers, our senior marketing manager. Our next award is our Department of Medicine Leadership Excellence Award. And this award recognizes a staff member for his or her exemplary leadership accomplishments and contributions to the Department of Medicine. These nominees have led, served, inspired, and collaborated with broad-ranging impact beyond their regular responsibilities. 
This year's recipient's nominator said, uh, our recipient creates a productive work environment and demonstrates open lines of communication with his open door policy and accessibility. It's evident that his team, including myself, trusts and depends on him heavily. Uh, a, a separate nominator said he drove the implementation and expansion of direct patient care teams during periods of high volumes at Grady, especially during the recent flu season, and he partnered with our hospital medicine leadership and others to expand hospital medicine services to Grady, which was a major undertaking and critically important to Grady's future. This year's Leadership Excellence Award winner is Steve Doney, Clinical Administrator for Grady Operations. Our next award is our Department of Medicine Outstanding Service Award. This award recognizes a staff member who provides consistent and sustained excellence, exceptional performance, and service to the division, Department of Medicine, and Emory University. The nominees de demonstrate integrity, teamwork, productivity, and customer service. Our recipient's nominator said, she excelled in multiple facets as a registered nurse working in neurology, intensive care, med surge, and Emory University's emergency department. She is held in high regard by both patients and coworkers with whom she interacts. She is an invaluable asset to our research program, and of course is entirely deserving of being honored with the Department of Medicine's Outstanding Service Award. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient, Jane Gillespie, research nurse. Uh, I'm receiving our extended service award. And our last uh, staff award for today is our Unsung Hero Award, which recognizes a staff member who goes above and beyond the routine call of duty. This award winner exhibits a high level of commitment, initiative, cooperation, and dedication in their job responsibilities. The winner's nominator said, she has a wonderful sense of team spirit and collegiality that elevates all aspects of our division. She exudes competence, but also a deep desire to be of service and to do whatever is necessary to help a faculty member, a trainee, a staff member, or a visitor in every interaction she has. Although we genuinely try our best to make sure that she gets the credit and recognition for everything she does, in fact, she is a true unsung hero within the Department of Medicine because so much of our success as a division in recent years and a huge component of our camaraderie stems from her enthusiastic and tireless support of our activities. Please join me in congratulating this year's unsung hero, Alice Muson Wood. I don't believe Alice is here today, but I'm sure Dr. Gideau will accept on her behalf. And now, uh, of course, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> congratulations, of course, to all of our staff award winners. And now I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Angel Leon, Vice Chair of Clinical Integration, to the podium to begin presenting our faculty awards. Hello, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, David. Um, I'm very happy to be here and to begin the presentation of the 2018 Department Faculty Awards. The winners are being recognized in the areas of education, service, clinical care, quality achievement, research, and peer mentorship. When I call your name, please come to the front of the auditorium for a photo. You can take it with David, you don't have to take it with me. 
Next slide. Thank you. There. Uh, our first award is the Outstanding Clinician Award. I'll go. What's that? Uh, okay. There we go. No, no, no. Not that good with technology, I guess. Huh? What, what, what do I do again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, got it. Very good. Our, our first award is the Outstanding Clinician Award. Uh, this award goes to recognize a faculty member who has demonstrated outstanding clinical and collaborative care for patients. The winners nominated said, despite a heavy clinical schedule at Emory, he has a remarkable patient satisfaction score of 96.7. He has great rapport with all staff that work with him and is always willing to help a colleague with concerns. He always gives a detailed description of his procedures with a drawing and takes his time to give the patient the feeling that they are his only patients for the day. He makes them feel special and that their health outcome is the first and only concern for him. So congratulations to our Outstanding Clinician Award winner, Dr. Field Willingham, Associate Professor in the Department of Digestive Diseases. can turn the podium over to someone who's not as technologically challenged as I am. <laughs> so uh, I would like to invite Dr. Nathan Spell, Associate Dean for Education and Professional Development, to present the next award. Nathan. All right, so um, I'm here to present today our um, Outstanding Quality Achievement Award. Uh, and this award recognizes a faculty member who's demonstrated outstanding contributions to clinical quality improvement or quality improvement within teaching, leadership, or research. <clears throat> this winner's nominator, nominator uh, said she has been extraordinary in her role by taking on these challenging infection prevention issues in the Emory Clinic. She is precocious and demonstrates a depth of knowledge, maturity, and leadership beyond her years. Her achievements in such a brief period have been impressive and praised by uh, EUH and Emory Clinic leadership and most importantly, have advanced care delivery and patient safety. So please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the uh, Outstanding Quality Achievement Award, Dr. Mary Beth Sexton. <laughs> So next, I'd like to in invite up Dr. Wendy, Wendy Armstrong, Vice Chair for Education and Integration. Thanks, Nate. So I'd like to take a, a couple seconds um, and first thank all of our educators, uh, everyone who touches a learner. It takes time to teach well. And in our healthcare environment, sometimes that time is tough to come by. And so I really, again, I'm grateful for everyone who makes um, our academic center uh, excellent in teaching. In your um, program, there are a number of education awards. I'm not going to read all of those, but I would like to recognize the faculty who were recently recognized at the um, residence uh, uh, roast and toast um, for those um, uh, awards that are nominated and voted on by residents. And so when I read your name, uh, if you could stand up and, and stay standing so that we can recognize those who are in the room. Uh, winning the highest award, the Yuha Coco Teaching Award, voted by the residents across um, all um, teaching sites this year, was Bavin Adiaru. I don't know if Bavin is here. Winning the Joyce Doyle Award who, uh, for the person who gives the most, in this case, of herself for the betterment of the program was Tracy Batiste. 
the Golden Apple Awards um, for Teaching Excellence by Sight, which include a general medicine as well as a subspecialty attending for EUH were Dan Dressler and Rob Cole. For Midtown were Chris Knudsen and Alvaro Velasquez. For Grady was Tracy Vatisse and Jordan Kempker. And for the VA was Raphael Harado and Ali Kashkuli. Dan, you are the one person standing. <laughs> Also recognized by the residents was the outstanding research mentor among the faculty. And the person who won this year was Larry Sperling. And we were pleased, or they were pleased to announce that in the future that the award for resident research mentorship would be renamed the Lawrence Sperling Award for resident mentorship. So, all right, now back to this script. So um, now I'd like to move on to um, award the Educator Impact Award. This award recognizes a faculty member who has made outstanding contributions as a medical educator as recognized by their peers. So this winner's nominator said he has been prolific in education and has served as faculty and or chair for numerous workshops and courses at national and international nephrology meetings over the years. His impact on the use of ultrasound and nephrology has been profound. It has changed the way nephrologists practice and has added an additional dimension to patient care. So I am very pleased to announce that this year, if you haven't figured it out already, the award goes to Charles O'Neill. I don't see him either. He's out of town. He's out of town. Okay. And then the final award that I would like to um, give is the Academy of Medical Educators Teach 12 Award. Um, this, uh, the Academy of Medical Educators was developed in 2011 to identify, recognize, and honor master teachers to develop and implement innovative education tools and programs, and to mentor and train aspiring educators who would act as role models for other faculty. The AME's Teach 12 Award is for the, development, is for the Department of Medicine faculty who best exemplify the Academy's Teach 12 core behaviors, which are greatest faculty role model and promote. This winner's nominator said that she has laid the foundation for a med ed for publications club within our program's core faculty to sponsor increased faculty development and participation in scholarship. Uh, they went on to say that I cannot think of another faculty member in recent memory who so clearly exemplifies the role model behaviors we aspire to in our daily practices as clinician educators. She's deeply invested in each of her learners and mentees' experiences, truly dedicated to the thoughtful, unhurried, and compassionate patient care, and actively contributes to an environment of intellectual curiosity. And I'm, again, pleased to announce, although I'm not sure that she is here, that this year the award goes to Tracy Vatisse. She's on vacation, okay. So now it gives me great pleasure, as always, to introduce Dr. Nanette Wenger, uh, professor in the Division of Cardiology, to the podium. Now good afternoon, it's past noon. Uh, we thought that what we would like to do is to spend a minute talk, talking about volunteerism very important in today's society, call the third sector in our community, and to say, how does it play out in academia? As background, voluntary action is defined as human endeavor not motivated by private gain or compulsion of law, where individuals and organizations come together to reflect and create the community and society that they need. It's not independent of government and the corporate work, but it exists in dynamic interdependence with and within such basic societal institutions. What we realize in our society is we have three separate institutional worlds. Business, which is 80%, government, which you wouldn't believe it is only 14%, but importantly, the voluntary or nonprofit, which is 6%, and it counts for 9% of our total national employment. This voluntary sector are individual actions to advance an agenda of mutual caring and concerns, defining individual voluntary action as that which gives personal meaning to life. And centuries ago, de Tocqueville called it building habits of the heart. 
I think it's important to realize the impact of the voluntary sector on other institutional sectors of our society, on business and on government. It contributes to democratic theory with social justice and the welfare of others. The contemporary welfare state really emerged from the voluntary roots of our early settlers. Volunteer motivation, why do we volunteer? Certainly their personal and social goals and needs. Volunteers weigh their options deliberately. It's not just casual. And the concern for others is not purely altruistic. But what we see in society is business, government, and volunteerism, and how does it translate into academia? In academia, it is research and teaching and service. And it is the service component of this. It is the volunteerism within academia that we honor today. What I'd like to do is to recognize the faculty members for this volunteerism at the level of professor. The nominator wrote as a faculty member for the past 29 years. His career at Emory has been defined by service to our institution. He has dedicated his career to health care continuously looking for ways to improve, streamline, and optimize our quality and infection prevention efforts in AEHC. His career at Emory is defined by significant and long-standing service of the highest caliber. His dedication to quality, prevention of healthcare-associated infections, and physician leadership has been exemplary, providing critical contributions to Emory's mission over his many years. And as I'm sure you have guessed, this award goes to James Steinberg. <laughs> At the associate professor level, she serves the division of the Department of Medicine and the School of Medicine, patients and learners, through an impressive array of clinical, educational, and leadership roles. Her leadership through periods of stressful growth has been a shining example of service leadership. She leads on the front line, juggling clinical care, coordination of resources, and collaboration with multiple stakeholders in a complex hospital system. Her exceptional and selfless contributions in building the Emory Hospital Medicine Service at Grady are not surprising in the lens of her longstanding commitment to Emory over the years. And this award goes to Joanna Bonsal. <laughs> And at the assistant professor level, she's an outstanding junior faculty member and faculty leader who is devoting her career to addressing inequities in healthcare and its delivery. She's using her innovating ideas and boundless energy to advocate for the vulnerable patients we treat at Grady. Since joining the faculty at Emory, she's helped to design a successful pilot program, now at its second year, which provides participants with the lifelong skills necessary to achieve healthy lifestyles through diet and exercise, thereby improving overall patient outcomes. And the award goes to Tracy Henry. is probably doing patient care. Now, <laughs> now I invite to the podium uh, Shanti Srinivasan, who's going to present the next awards. Annette, before you get away, I want to say a couple of things. For those of you that don't know Dr. Winger, she is a legend in our department, uh, a, a real, and she has spent 60 plus years, uh, uh, somewhere in that, huh? Almost. <laughs> 
so I, I want to thank her, uh, and and obviously this, uh, these awards are recognized for her service, but I just want to personally thank you for all that you've done. So. to announce today's Shanti Sitaraman Silver Pair Mentoring Award to two faculty members who have demonstrated outstanding mentoring to early career faculty within the Department of Medicine during the past year. Our first winner's nominator Um, uh, said, she stands out as a mentor who immeasurably and profoundly affected my life as a physician and a human being. Beyond teaching, she leads by example. Beyond en encouraging, she advocates for us. Her deep investment in her learners is extraordinary. A mentor is someone who you can see greatness inside of you that you cannot see in yourself. A mentor is someone who can identify environments in which you will flourish without you even recognizing them. She is the mentor that you carry with you wherever you go and that you can always come back to. And I am one of many who is filled with immeasurable gratitude. She is an inspiration to all who have benefited from her mentorship. She is a force for good and right at Emory. Uh, university and in the greater Atlanta community. So please join me in congratulating uh, Dr. Daniel Jones, <laughs> Associate Professor in the Division of General Medicine and Geriatrics. I'm not sure if Dr. Jones is here. Uh, okay. Um, so we'll proceed to our next. Um, so our next win winner's nominator. Let me just. Next winner's nominator said, he has been supportive since I was a fellow at Emory and continues to be the most supportive person of my career in research, teaching, and service. Similar to Shanti Sita Raman, he is committed to improving the professional opportunities and education of trainees. Uh, please join me in congratulating. Dr. Jeff Sands, Director of Division of Renal Medicine, on receiving this year's Shanti Sitaraman Silver Peer Mentoring Award. Um, I would like to invite Dr. Kathy Grindling, Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs and Professional Development and Vice Chair for Research and Faculty Development to the podium. So I'd like, <clears throat> like to, um, I have the privilege actually of recognizing quite a number of faculty for various things that they've done over the past year and I'd like to start by recognizing our recently promoted faculty. So those who are promoted by, as I call your name, please stand so we can recognize you. Arash Grakui, Stacy Higgins, Tavi Iacimescu, Adriana Iacimescu, Vandana Nayar, Clyde Parton, Tanvir Rab, and Nate Spell. We're all promoted to full professor. Our promotions to associate professors, again, please stand. Sharini Alam, Sarub Chalha, John Doran, Micah Fisher, Paula Fru, Divya Gupta, Idrioma Isiadinso, Russell Kemker, Katino Kabazi, Bernard Lasang, Yoon Lee, Jason Lenevsky, Jeannie Park, Molly Perkins, Eva Rimler, Anurag Sahu, Alejandra San Martin, Sarah Satola, Anandi Shath, Melissa Stevens, Camille Vaughn, 
and Jerry Wontrickle. Congratulations. I should, I should mention that we still have a few promotions that are in process in the school, so if you didn't hear your name called, don't, no, no worries. <laughs> I'd also like to recognize our clinical distinctions. This is a program we started last year to recognize our clinicians who contribute so much to the Department of Medicine. We have three categories to recognize today. Our master clinicians, again, please stand. Lorenzo DiFrancesco. Wilson Holland, and Fred Rabari. <laughs> Next are distinguished physicians, Rena Eisenstein, Stephanie Garrett, Nurkin Ilksoy, Anna Merck, Aguchi Obunwa, and Tom Price. And finally, our senior physicians, Bhavan Adarahu, S Sabrina Basu, Charles Gratson, Jenny Hahn, Scott Hoff, Karam Khan, Jennifer Lam, Muhammad Musa, Anju Uman, Diego Ramalina, Sabi Saeed, Annie Sayed, and Mahul Tajani. Congratulations. <laughs> So this year, we started a new program called LEAP, which is a leadership practicum to help some of our mid-career faculty gain leadership skills. And I wanted to recognize our five participants in the LEAP program this year. They'll be graduating at the end of the summer. So Iris Castro Revadoretto, yeah, Kevin Hensey, Michael Hoskins, Mary Moniki, and Brian Wells. Finally, I wanted to recognize uh, those who have been previously recognized with the Emory Millie Pub Club Award. The Millie Pub Club is for those who have written a paper that's been cited more than a thousand times. And just to put that in context, the average scientific paper in our discipline is cited 14 times. We had a number of Department of Medicine faculty inducted into the Millie Pub Club this year. John Merlino, Mark Saja, Neil Schulman, Carlos Del Rio, Scott Friedkin, Susan Ray, John Savransky, and James Bailey. Congratulations to them. <laughs> the Department of Medicine also supports FAME grants, which are awarded to faculty to devote 20% of their protected time to act academic pursuits. It's a very competitive program, and we had three FAME awardees this year. Matthew, Matthew Dudgeon, Ali Sarabi, and Xanthia Wiley. <laughs> and now I'll move on to presenting the research awards. We have a number of research awards divided by clinical research, basic research, and by faculty level. So this award recognizes researchers producing the most outstanding research publication in both basic and clinical translational research areas. So the first award for basic science research senior faculty goes to Alejandro San Martin. <laughs> for her paper, PALDIP2 is an oxygen sensitive protein that controls PDH and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase lipoylation and activation. <laughs> to support metabolic adaptation in hypoxia and cancer. <laughs> the next award is for the Outstanding Scientific Citation Clinical and Translational for Senior Faculty. And this award goes to Nadine Rufael. <laughs> Nadine's paper was 
entitled The Safety, Immunogenicity, and Acceptability of Inactivated Influenza Vaccines Delivered by Microneedle Patch, a Randomized Partially Blinded Placebo-Controlled Phase I Trial. The next award is for Basic Research Junior Faculty, and this award goes to Marina Sorrentino Hernandez. <laughs> for her paper, Polymerase Delta Interacting Protein 2 Deficiency Protects Against Blood-Brain Barrier Permeability in Ischemic Brain. The last citation award is the Clin Clinical Translational Award for Junior Faculty, and this award goes to Kyoko Takeyama from the Department from the Division of Cardiology for her work on novel PET and near-infrared imaging probes for the specific detection of bacterial infections associated with cardiac devices. <laughs> The next award is the R. Wayne Alexander Excellence in Research Award. This award recognizes significant contributions to medical knowledge realized through a body of research over an individual's career in either basic research or clinical and translational research. This, the nominator for this individual said he is recognized as a national leader in HIV medicine, as an expert in antiretroviral therapy. His research has influenced the recommendations for the management of HIV infection and guidelines recommendations. He's a national, nationally and internationally recognized HIV clinical investigator who has made important contributions to the management of HIV infection and thus an outstanding candidate for this award. And this award goes to Jeff Lennox. Before I leave the research awards, I'd like to just remind you and invite all of you to the Department of Medicine Research Day, which will be on October 26th in the Cox Hall Ballroom. Our keynote speaker this year is our very own Dean, who is also a member of the Department of Medicine. Now I'll move on to some of my favorite awards, which are the Hidden Gem Awards. And these awards recognize faculty who have made outstanding and impactful contributions to our mission, but whose significant but quiet contributions may escape external recognition. I should mention that the word clouds you see in front of each of these awards were generated last week by our nominees when we, when we recognize the awards. And I think the words that are in these word clouds do really uh, reflect the awards themselves. So these awards, there's one per division, and I'm going to go through all uh, nine awards. The first goes to Bernard Lassay from the Division of Cardiology. He's probably hiding. So Bernard has had an enormous impact on the cardiology division throughout his time here. He's emerged as an incredible molecular biologist and a thoughtful teacher. He has diligently and patiently worked with dozens of trainees, providing educational opportunities and scientific support for an amazingly diverse set of research projects through his three decades of service to Emory. Dr. Lesseg is the ultimate team player and hidden gem, providing critical expertise, support, and education to our trainees and faculty. He has been and will continue to be a vital member of the research efforts of the Department of Medicine. The next award is for Amai Kayed, who's an assistant professor in the Division of Digestive Diseases. 
Dr. Kayette is clearly one of our best teachers and brightest attendings. His knowledge base is incredible, and he shared this freely, easily, and without any hint of braggadocio. I hope to be like him. He works tirelessly towards the improvement of the GI unit at Grady. He has a major impact on the quality and increased productivity. Dr. Kayed provides unmatched quality of patient care in an environment where he's always pressed for time. Despite a busy gastroenterology service and an endoscopy lab, his compassionate and thorough patient care is clearly not noticed by both patients and clinical staff. The next hidden gem is Jessica Alvarez, an assistant professor in the Division of Endocrinology. She She has been tremendously effective in accomplishing a lot of behind the scene work required for successfully obtaining INDs from the FDA, IRB approvals, and writing all the administrative sections of NIH supported clinical studies. She is always available to help with division initiative and tasks and is full of ideas and resources. The next hidden gem is Stephanie Brown Johnson, who's an assistant professor in the Division of General Medicine and Geriatrics at the VA. She's been at the Atlanta VA Medical Center for over 33 years, working in the Purple Team Primary Care Clinic. She is well-liked by patients, staff, and learners. She is a champion of integrative health within the VA and was recently awarded a Whole Health for Life grant for over a million dollars to support a career, a center for comprehensive integrative health at that facility. The next hidden gem is Ethan Mullet, who, an assistant professor in the Division of Hospital Medicine. He's a great teacher. The residents and interns love him. Dr. Mullich, who actively seeks teaching opportunities across the spectrum of learners. He's truly a hidden gem in our large and diverse division of hospital medicine. His accomplishments and contributions are richly deserving of this recognition. And he is hiding somewhere. <laughs> Next hidden gem is the Nandi Sheth, who's an assistant professor in the Division of Infectious Diseases. Dr. Sheth is a major contributor to, our H contributor to our HIV research program, in particular HIV and women's health, and is an outstanding citizen of our division and department. Her remarkable contributions have been accomplished while staying focused on her patients, her clinical team, and shared goals of the division, department, and institution. She is generous with her time, humble about her accomplishments, never demanding the spotlight, and always strongly committed to our mission. Next hidden gem is Michael Sterling, who's an assistant professor in the Division of Pulmonary Allergy, Critical Care, and Sleep Medicine. You notice that all our hidden gems are not here. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the hardest working colleagues I have ever had in my long career, and his commitments to our patient care and teaching missions are invaluable. I can honestly say that Michael Sterling is a hidden gem who deserves not only recognition for his remarkable contributions, but also the gratitude of the department for his leadership. Whereas many other faculty members in our division may have a more visible role at Emory and in the academic community, nobody has been more valuable to Emory's shared vision of becoming the nation's premier site for critical care delivery, innovation, and education. The next hidden gem is Jason Cobb, an assistant professor in the Division of Renal Medicine. He is a busy and productive clinician in the renal division who practices at EUMH, Grady, and Emory Dialysis, but continuously makes outstanding and impactful contributions to our educational and clinical missions. He developed a new outpatient rotation that's been enormously popular with the fellows, and he's been a leader in redesigning our interview process. 
In recognition of his contributions to the clinical fellowship program, we named him an associate professor earlier this year. He consistently makes valuable contributions to our educational and clinical missions while almost never receiving recognition for this effort other than the gratitude of the many faculty and trainees whom he helps. I think our last hidden gem is Atham Tiliakos, who's an assistant professor in the Division of Rheumatology. In addition to maintaining a very busy practice in rheumatology, Dr. Tiliakos has established the Emory Rheumatology Vasculitis Program, a collaboration of a broad range of specialists in multiple divisions which make us able to diagnose and treat this condition effectively. In all, Dr. Tiliakos exemplifies the academic clinician and scholar that is becoming an endangered species. In addition to his talent and dedication, he is consistently kind, empathetic, and fully involved with patients and trainees. The fact that he not only continues to work on all prongs of academic medicine, but that he manages to be so effective and productive in all of them is remarkable. Concludes our program. I'll turn it over to Dr. Stevens in a minute. I just want to ask all of the award winners to please come to the front of the auditorium for a photo, and all of our residents, our new interns, and our faculty to go to the photo shoot in the School of Medicine building, room 110. Dr. Stevens. So I, I want to uh, thank uh, the staff who've put this program together uh, uh, and you know, appreciate everyone's contributions to uh, this, uh, this award ceremony. Uh, uh, been very efficient. We'll, we'll practice on slide changing. Uh, uh, <laughs> but other than that, everything uh, was, was superb. So again, I want to congratulate and again recognize the diversity of of accomplishments of both the faculty and staff that we've uh, we've shown you today, it, it is a it is a large but uh, very creative and energetic department of medicine, and I want to thank you. And let's give the award winners another round of applause. <laughs> So please, uh, as Kathy said, award winners to the front for a picture, and then uh, we'll assemble in room at one room one ten, one hundred or one ten, one ten.